Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. Thanks for tuning in. On this video right here, I want to go into kind of a more monochromatic approach to um, finishing a scene. All right. Now I've been doing a lot of uh, techniques where you can see some color application on our compositions. On this one right here, I'm just going to use a very simple uh, technique to just using um, a monochromatic. In this case, it'll be with black ink approach, and it's a, a way to use the designs that I used to do in what I used to call, I think it was Stampscaping 201 or 102 or something like that. And it was the follow-up to a class that, uh, you know, where I was just giving people the basics on compositional blending, layering of imagery, and the uh, basics on dye-based inks and glossy paper uh, techniques. This is a scene um, with the lighthouse, light rocks, and waves, and this is the little stamp that goes with it called Rocks and Waves, and I've filled in the area at the base here, and just to re you know, recap what I went over in the past is, I think in video two or something like that, but you can use, you know, if I didn't have this rock right here, I could probably just look at the stamp right here, and there's similar formations down here. I could probably just, you know, uh, wipe that off, clean it off real good, and just ink up the bottom portion of this, and I could probably use those rocks down there as well. Okay, so you can dissect and use your stamps um, in, uh, in a different way than use the usage of them in their entirety. All right. Now I have this area out here on the side. I'm going to fill in with this cloud stamp right here. All right, the blending of sky imagery. I have a video uh, on that subject where I just go into that aspect of them. But on the cloud stamp right here, if I build up my clouds, like about like so, you can see where that line is up there on the top, okay? And that line is fine there if I'm going to build up and stack higher, okay? But if I want it to just kind of transition off into the sky, and I don't want a hard line right there, what I can do is I can wipe off the edge, and I'm wiping it off pretty good. I'm not just going on a tiny little line or edge. And... I don't know, this is probably about between a half inch to an inch into the scene. If I want this to transition off, like about like so, I can wipe off that edge, so instead of giving me a black impression, it's giving me a very light gray, so it transitions off into that space in a more kind of graceful way. All right. Wipe off with a dry paper towel. Don't do it with a wet paper towel, otherwise it's going to give you too, you know, harsh of a line. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Okay? So you can see where that transitions nicely. Um, I'll do the same on this scene. Alright. Wiping the edge. Good even pressure. I'm not putting too much pressure and I'm not rocking the stamp on its edge. All right. I have that little area right there. I can just take a bit of that cloud, fill in like so. Re-ink, wipe off the edge. Okay, now on a scene like this, I have this open area in here. I have these light areas of the lighthouse. I don't want to stamp this cloud over the top of them and thus create a cloud impression right in that space right there. So if you're worried about it, I mean, you can, I mean, that 
Here they go. That's a rip paper towel. I guess that kind of fit perfectly right there. And just do kind of a soft mask. I'm just going to try to avoid it in general, but I don't know. I went over it a little bit, but that's all right. But, you know, I had that little mask there. So in most cases, again, you won't have to do a lot of really careful masking with most of the imagery. All right. Uh, coming in like that, like so. This is the part that I've wiped off. Oops, I didn't give it a good impression there. You can see where it kind of didn't take. I wasn't being careful, so I'm just coming in with another impression, going right over the top of it. It fills in, just like so. All right, I have this little area of light in there. Sometimes what I like to do is create some sort of a focal point I don't know, like maybe some birds or something like that. Where they're moving up into the light, you know, I can go with a real dark impression like that to stand out. But if I want to, I can also kind of blot them off a little bit. And where I stamped them out in there, it stamps out a little bit lighter, kind of where they're moving into the light. All right. Now, that's just, of course, it's a real monochromatic composition right now. And we do have light and shade in there somewhat, you know, just the shading area, shaded areas that are inherent on the designs themselves. But in order to kind of really flesh the scene out even more, what I can do is I can come in with some dark inks, okay? Now this is going, you know, directly opposite of uh, what I've shown you in terms of color application in previous videos where we're starting off with something super light, all right? Now this kind of monochromatic approach to inking this scene up and blending in some tones is, um, it's a different approach. And again, we started off with light tones in those color um, scenes to avoid getting these different types of shapes everywhere, right? Okay, so I've used thicker inks that blend nicely. Okay, now so that being said, um, I wouldn't say that this is a precarious, you know, um, technique right here of tonal application, all right? But what I would say is that um, the incidence of getting an edge or something like that on our scenes is going to be a lot higher because we're starting off with a darker tone and uh, that's going to just create a lot more contrast against the background. So usually in these scenes that I do this type of technique of going monochromatic and just toning in with the same dark color that I've stamped everything out in, I like to have the compositions a little bit more, say, bold. Here's a scene right here that's a pond, okay? And you can see it's a very light, kind of a more delicate um, image, all right? This one would be a good one too. See how it's a lot more bold? These types of bolder imagery darker things like that, I think tend to look a little bit better in this technique, okay? So, all right, so that being said, let's get right into it. All right, now the reason why I did this technique right here in my um, uh, second class, um, second workshop that I used to do is because in the first class, people are kind of getting the feel of how to use the applicators, you know, and getting the feel of, uh, um, how pressure um, uh, affects the tapping that you're doing. Let me do this on a light piece of paper and I'll show you what I'm getting at right here. Okay, see how I'm starting on the outside edge like this and I'm moving in nice and slowly. All right, and I can get a transition of tones like this without getting hard shapes like that, all right? This is one of the things, a lot of times when the perimeters of cards are a little, you know, they're dark in the center of its light, you know, so that it looks like light is emanating from the uh, center. If there's a dark perimeter, a lot of times people's natural inclination is to use these applicators in this fashion, going around the perimeter like this, right? and then they get all these shapes like that. But that's not really how I do it. I'm starting on the edge like this, and if you want to take advantage of a wet to dry, and thus dark to light 
a transition, what you want to do is you want to stay in an area like this. And this, this is what I'm doing on the lighter tones as well. Um, I'm working an area like this. And then when that gets filled in like that and I have that transition, then I kind of move to my next area and I'm doing the same type of thing. It's an out to in process like this as opposed to perimeter like that, all right? So how that looks on here. Yes, I'm adding on the outside. Every time I re-ink the applicator, I tend to start it on the area that's going to be my darkest area in that zone or whatever. All right? Because at its wettest point, it's going to leave its strongest impression. I don't want to start this wet sponge right in the middle there. I want to start it in the darker area. Okay. So anyways, what you can see here is as I add this in here, and I also want to take advantage of not only the dark, wet tapping, but I want to take advantage of kind of my drier tapping, and that gives me a, a lighter gray, and thus a fuller um, gray scale. All right? So in my lighter areas, I'm using the drier ap applicator tip. And when it's drier too, when it requires more tapping to really get any of that uh, ink on there to show, there's a lot more control over it that way. You know, because it takes a little bit more effort for it to show, and that's what you want. All right, starting off again. And I mean, and this is a grayscale. I mean, if I wanted to, I could use a you know a gray ink as well. I, I you know, you can certainly do something like that. Okay, the darker I take, make the perimeter, the lighter the um, lighter areas are going to seem, by contrast. Okay, if I want that little uh, window to uh, appear much lighter, what I can use is my dry brush and kind of carefully tap around in there and make the structure a little bit darker, like so. Okay, and uh, again, kind of avoid pressing down too hard, because again, we don't want to get like that shape, you know, right in the center there. All right, inking up, outside to inside, and you can see this as I make this darker around this. This area in here is really starting to glow. Uh, because of the contrast. Maybe I'll kind of knock down some of these uh, waves just a touch. I'll put some tone on them. Maybe have some, uh, some of the other areas in here more illuminated with uh, reflected light coming out of the sky. So it kind of gives you a different look. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, black and white photography. And uh, I like doing this uh, technique right here every now and then, you know, in addition to the uh, kind of more colorful scenes. And this is a really good exercise too. Um, even if you, you're really not into kind of a a monochromatic look, but this really gives you kind of command of the darker tones that you're using so that when you go back in and let's say you do a color scene, when you get into your darker tones that you know you're working with, you'll really have a lot more command over it because of this uh, kind of pra you know, uh, practicing this technique right here of only using that darker tone and getting really, trying to get really smooth transitions use just using one color, one dark color. Okay. Now you can see I'm not, I'm stamping out some of these clouds right here, but the other ones I'm leaving, you know, somewhat light. All right. Now, here's the thing. All right. That looks pretty good to me. Um, as far as uh, 
the tonal transitions that I'm achieving right here. Here's another thing that I like doing too. Sometimes if you want kind of a more rich gray, we can go back to our lighter tone colors. This one happens to be the um, Adirondack Lights uh, Aqua. And uh, let me see, I hope you can see this on the video, but uh, kind of going opposite instead of starting with this color, I'm kind of ending with it. And if you know um, some of those colored tints that they used to use on uh, black and white photography, they were really super, super light uh, colors, and they used to go in and tint them, you know, like kind of a colorization of a, you know, black and white uh, photography. Um, but this kind of goes in, and again, I'm kind of staying away from some of those really light areas, but in kind of the darker areas, this color right here, it's adding kind of a, a cooler tone um, if I'm doing something kind of like a rustic cabin or something like that. A lot of times what I like to do is I like to use um, the peach blue.